let's get started um okay let us just try to revise what we did in uh last week and especially the last uh couple of days which is friday and thursday so uh last week we covered um no, um almost uh all the uh intermediate sort of concepts in python uh, generators, decorators, and uh, so on. Um, and then uh, uh, on Friday, I think on Thursday as well. So we tried to understand, we started with the project last week. So, and then we also tried to brainstorm. So, uh, and then we learned how to split things into different uh, boxes, which are nothing but components now. And uh, there are uh, formal ways to do it, which happens in office. So it, it is similar to what we did. It we sort of brainstorm and then um, split it into components, and then uh, uh, design it, and then we start uh, writing the code. So uh, so uh, we also looked at the process from the beginning of the requirements uh, till the deployment, and there are several processes. And we also learned that. Uh, development is just one small part of the whole process, software uh, process. So development is where things uh, you know, get uh, uh, implemented. So that doesn't mean that entire uh, we are the we are the most important uh, chain in the uh, we are most important than link in the entire chain. Every link is more uh, is is equally important. Testing is important, integration test is important, sales is important, pre-sales is important, and then customer is important, finance is important. So all these things are equally important. So uh, keeping that in mind, uh, developer, developer should have a view of uh, what is happening at a customer level uh, as well. So more closer to your uh, customer, more, uh, you know, uh, uh, we will implement it more uh, specific to customer or else what happens is we try to develop uh, something and customer wants something else so which is usually the case when there are a lot of levels in in the company so that is the reason uh, we should have a constant interaction with somebody who is interacting with the customer directly or we'll, we should have uh, direct interactions with um, customers so that's what we learned uh, last week. And uh, especially on Friday, we uh, try to look at how internet works. Uh, so uh, we learned about uh, the stack, which is also called as OSS stack. It is an, um, you know, just a uh, reference stack. So at, uh, at base level, it's all just the bits uh, because it's just electrical signals, right? So between the NIC cards, which is nothing but uh, network interface cards so which is um, available when you buy the uh, pc on the motherboard and also you can insert as many nic cards as uh, possible and then depending on the uh, motherboard support and uh, you can uh, if you had bought switches like wi-fi routers you can see that there are several um, you know um, openings to connect uh, the uh, RJ45 cable or the network cable. So all of them are uh, NIC interfaces for um, to get into traffic. So that is at the bit level and then there are several protocols built on top of it. Uh, one of them uh, like uh, application level protocol is like we learned about HTTP which is hypertext um, transfer protocol. So which runs the internet which helps us to you know have a uniform way of communication across the internet. So that is the reason when we uh, download something or when we open a page, so we see uh, some sort of HTML uh, page in the back end, uh, which is called like source code. When you right click and open source code, it opens that. So JavaScript is the one which runs the, powers the internet because JavaScript was invented long back and now people uh, are moving trying to move to other languages but it's very difficult because like internet is so big that it's difficult to change all things at once so uh, javascript can run on your uh, browser which is now people are using chrome constantly there are a lot of um, browsers before so 
like uh, even today we have firefox um, internet explorer was there and then uh, microsoft has its own now uh, and then so yeah uh, you can all so that doesn't mean that you cannot uh, uh, like uh, use the internet without browser right you can also write your own code to fetch data from uh, different uh, servers which we saw using request library there are also command line uh, utilities like curl wget um, and so on where you can on the command line you can uh, download the data from uh, from an endpoint and we on top of http we also looked at an architecture which is called as rest arch rest uh, architecture so that is why that is one of the reasons you keep uh, hearing rest apis uh, so RESTful APIs means it's like stateless uh, at server level. So I explained what, what is stateless and what is stateful. So um, now the world is uh, no, um, so um, no, um, fast forward from the basic internet where servers used to be on one single computer and we used to connect to that particular you know uh, uh, computer and then uh, internet used to work. Now the users are so many that uh, uh, internet is reaching to everybody and users are uh, flocking into internet. For example, Facebook, uh, Twitter, uh, Wikipedia, and uh, you name it. Like uh, all of these uh, servers, it's difficult to deploy code in one computer because it will blow up. So too many users are coming into your um, network and uh, it's difficult to serve them. So what people have uh, come up with uh, ideas to move some parts of the code into different uh, uh, initially what uh, what was done is move the same uh, entire complete piece of code into different uh, computers and then um, we uh, th then there were problems and then they started okay let us do it this way so so i'll just explain what so how did how did the distributed systems came into picture. So initially we had just one computer and then um, because of uh, this, uh, because, so, so if there are a lot of users getting connected to this, so this will like crash down. So people thought, okay, let us split the this users into multiple computers. So I had like multiple computers. Now you had some layer where you can distribute these users into different uh, parts of the uh, uh, different servers. So somebody who is sitting and doing it, uh, doing the load balancing is called load balancer. And uh, yeah, so for outside world, this is the IP that gets exposed. And this IP uh, is get then getting, it has got its own URL. Um, so this is done by dns so dns is domain name service which does uh, because we cannot remember ips right so your is the best way to um, remember so that is why url was born and then uh, yeah um, and then what we did is uh, so this had a lot of problems for example what if the code uh, recent uh, code had so a um, uh, one is the code deployment, so you know, different versions. Second is also the data. Uh, what if you had logged in today here, uh, say this is facebook.com, and then you logged in here today, tomorrow you logged in here, uh, Will are you, uh, you know, uh, for sure getting the same data that you had updated? For example, you updated pro profile picture, which was uh, done on this particular server um, here, one, and then tomorrow you logged in and load balancer pointed you to second. So did your profile picture got updated right so this bought a uh, lot of problems and the distributed system is the systems is not easy to design so nowadays what we have is now you can split the instead of putting entire code into these servers you can also split the code into different parts like for example i can uh, split the code here uh, in our project i can split the code into like news component and uh, subscription uh, subscription component user registration component and so on to different parts and i can uh, simply do uh, you know um, deploy those into different uh, computers so this is how uh, the components can be split into different 
computers and then they get aggregated at some point of time so if you log into amazon.com so it fetches from different so this model uh, where you have split these components into different computers now these are called as services and uh, since they are uh, small components of the same big software this uh, uh, small components are together uh, like each of them are called microservices so that is where you hear microservices now uh, you can uh, you know uh, obvious question is okay i have got uh, these uh, computers uh, aren't they like uh, wastage of resources because now we have one computer here we have three computers here now if we had to use a lot of computers for each of these computers so isn't that a, a waste of resource so you can also see that uh, the the advancement of technology uh, happened uh, along with uh, this sort of architecture we also came up with uh, so initially we had like bare, bare metals like our laptops and uh, the uh, uh, where you directly install your operating system so initially we had bare metals um, and then uh, when you had to scale up you had to buy, buy another bare metal uh, another computer and deploy the code so this was you know uh, called as like horizontal uh, scaling which is like um, you keep buying the uh, new hardware every time you want your threshold is hit like 100 users per computer and so on so later people came up with uh, something called as virtual machines on same bare metal bare metal you can have uh, multiple operating systems or multiple uh, uh, you know, uh, instances of operating systems so that is why they are called virtual uh, machines each of which one of them are called uh, virtual machines so instead, in fact, you can also use uh, like Ubuntu on top of um, your laptop. So that is a virtual machine for somebody who wants to access uh, just the Ubuntu. So now we, so this is like at a, uh, you know, uh, the, these computers have monitors, lab, the keyboard, mouse, and all these things, right? But in data centers, this is not the case. What you have is you have big rack, and then you have these slices. Um, where you can uh, put in the uh, hardware so that hardware is like pushed inside this uh, each one of them and it has network interface and a lot of other interfaces which are required and you have like big rack uh, for example if you search for uh, data centers um, you know or tour in uh, youtube you can see how big big is the data centers like it will be something like um, you know uh, go down like uh, ikea or uh, some supermarket so which is like uh, you know um, under one roof and there are several uh, uh, these sort of racks so it's nice to see uh, how it got deployed so all of these things are handled by uh, you know infrastructure management guys so this is one of the things which uh, you know which is an interesting uh, area uh, to look at like how the infrastructure get, gets managed so after VM, people came up with, okay, how do I split even more? Uh, so so VM has some limitations. For example, it needs uh, you know, shared uh, uh, resources. And then um, if you are not using v VM, you are, you are uh, you know, uh, actually uh, you know, um, uh, throttling the underlying OS and other things. So people came up with even more uh, you know, um, abstraction. So those are called uh, containers. So containers, uh, you might have heard now almost. So some from the bare metal, we moved from a bare metal to virtual machines. Uh, and then even on virtual machines, uh, you know, uh, instead of virtual machines, people thought that, okay, instead of doing virtual machines, I can split and, you know, share the resources and then kill these containers when it is not in use. So this sort of uh, abstraction, uh, so there is a layer which does it. For example, for containers, it's called Docker. Docker is one of the softwares or tools where you can instantiate a lot of containers. So you might have heard about Docker. So now we learned about, um, you know, this is a brief session. In fact, it's, it's a big book about, there is a big book uh, uh, you know, uh, in distributed systems, like what are the problems, how, how things get deployed, or how do you solve the problems? And so on. It's a you know, um, it's a uh, interesting thing. But uh, just to you know, uh, correct your ideas, why there are why you should uh, use REST APIs and where it does matter and what are the examples and uh, you know, um, 
why things are like this. So this is one of the mental pictures that you need to have. So it's not just one computer. There are several computers. So uh, within those computers, there are containers. Uh, so within these containers, if you deploy your code, uh, so that is where you are. You call them as microservices. So that is about uh, brief introduction about how the thing, things get uh, deployed. So now um, coming back to our REST API services. So um, you can create a component, um, some component to say our news. And you can actually deploy it uh, somewhere. You can access the APIs. Uh, API is nothing but application programming interface. At internet level, uh, we call it as APIs. At, if it is in the same computer, we call them as functions and other uh, names, right? So API has got an endpoint. So you, we saw that there is URL and then there is some endpoint. Say it could be something like version one uh, news. If this is our endpoint, uh, we also will, when we are exposing it to outside world, we, we should also write a documentation or there are tools which can generate the documentation. It will have what are uh, the operations that you can do. Um, that is get, uh, put post. Uh, yeah, so, uh, there is a uh, okay. There is also put and post. Um, okay, I forgot about post last time. So the uh, post and put you can for now you can just think as uh, same. It's just a new. It creates a new entry, but there is a you know a slight difference. But at this moment, um, you, you don't worry about that. So put and post, and then there is a patch which is to update an entry and then also delete. So you say that, okay, uh, these are the operations supported. You can also just support get. Uh, so we also uh, looked at one of the examples, right? So, so we did get and we tried to uh, post something. It, we got an error. So all these error codes are defined at HTTP level and then uh, REST APIs can, is using them as one of the carriers to uh, expose APIs and make use of it. So uh, input and output are mostly uh, JSON. So yeah, uh, so we will have to deal with uh, JSON. So if you ask for news, probably I uh, output the news in form of uh, JSON. So this is what we learned last time. And uh, um, maybe uh, I wanted to uh, touch base upon the uh, you know, how the distributed systems work and what you need to keep in mind so that you can split this things into different components and you can uh, spin it up and you can also use it uh, seamlessly. Okay. So that, that happens uh, later, like you can uh, do it yourself when, because we do not have so many containers and all these things, but yeah. So generally that is the overall idea. Uh, okay, that's about uh, revision and uh, a little bit about you know, distributed systems. We, today we will learn, uh, you know, we'll go ahead and, and do something. Before that, I want to, uh, talk about uh, version control systems because um, I want you guys to uh, write code and upload code and get used to that. So how does the code management happen? So we'll just cover a um, little bit about you know, version controlling. So what happens when you when you, you have this uh, code, right? We have written this news.py. So if I, uh, if I have, um, multiple people so i can uh, one person like uh, one person cannot write the entire code right so uh, people have uh, we have discussed about dynamics of about people and the code so one obviously one person won't be writing this uh, uh, no, uh, piece of code and the entire project will be split into multiple components probably there are component owners and uh, they might be keep uh, um, uh, changing so generally, uh, when you store the code, it is called as a repository. So before all these tools came into picture, so how things were working is uh, quite, now it looks funny, but uh, what used to happen is people used to send, you know, uh, code over, they, there used to be FTP servers and they used to download the code and you know, version it, write version in, in, in the beginning of the headers saying that, uh, this is V1 and this is written by say so and so and uh, latest change is uh, this. 
So this is sort of a header within the source code itself. Uh, so people used to write that, okay, I have made these changes and this is the version. So somebody who wants to work on this or parallelly working on this, so he will actually unzip FTP, uh, download that file and actually merge it manually. So this works okay when you have like, say five or six people, uh, and, but uh, imagine now the uh, you know, uh, code is probably you, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, if you imagine, there are like thousands of people working on that code, right? It's impossible. So yeah, people come up with different ideas. So how do we solve this problem of uh, writing the code and merging them properly? So there were several tools. Uh, so um, uh, so those tools, uh, all these tool, tools are called as source code uh, control uh, tools. So our uh, even better, it's called as VCS, version uh, control systems. Version control systems, something like this. So these are called version control systems. So why we call it as version control system is because there are a lot of versions of the same um, uh, code. So uh, how do you manage this? So, so some tools which were uh, you might have heard in the probably early 2000s and uh, you know uh, 90s or like Perforce, which were which was like paid, uh, and then came SVN, and now we are using Git. So there were some other tools as well. Uh, so there were if you look at you know just uh, search in uh, uh, Google, so you'll have a lot of tools. So each of this. Uh, uh, you know, version control systems. So until we uh, arrived at gate, so most of it had different architectures. For example, Perforce, if you had to use, so you couldn't, um, you know, uh, have a copy of your own on your laptop. You should be logged into that Perforce system uh, and then, uh, you know, download some parts of the code if you want and then check in or just you know, on the same server, you need to like um, uh, change, make changes and uh, check in the code. So this part of writing the code and putting code back into the version control system is called checking it. Checking out is same thing, like you are making a uh, you know, branch or a version of your own. Imagine there is already a version, say V23, some 23rd version. So if you want to you know, check out, Initially, you um, so you had to check out as V24, and this would keep track. So these systems VCS would keep, would keep track of it, and then uh, once you check uh, check out, and then uh, you put back the code. It is called check in. So these are the terms which uh, uh, you know which were called in those days, and then there were there is also called as uh, commit and uh, so on. So I will learn about that. Um, so parallelly what uh, happened is, okay, so uh, in enter enterprise level, uh, if you go to office and in your office, there is a wash. Yeah, sorry. Any questions? Okay. No, they can, my daughter is talking. Yeah. Okay. Okay. No uh, okay. So, uh, we were talking about version control systems and uh, initially in enterprise level uh, so if, if you had uh, started a job in 2000s so you we go to office and then we law you know you we initialize something to access this source code and then write source code so this is like it's it's in the closest uh, environment so in uh, in 2000s and early 2000s there was a movement of um, open source open source movement so this is an uh, important thing to remember in computer sense. What well, the reason why we can use, for example, Python, we just simply downloaded and started using it, right? So things were not like this before. So because of uh, this open source um, guys uh, who are who, who are of the uh, opinion that source code should be available for everyone and everyone who wants to make changes should be able to make changes. For example, uh, in uh, 90s and early 2000s, Microsoft was the like big guy uh, who, um, you know, uh, it, it's difficult to, you know, if you want to add a feature on top of Excel sheet, you can, you won't be able to do it because source code was not available. So people came up with 
uh, you know, uh, different solutions, parallel solutions. So that is how the Linux was uh, born. Like you know, uh, Linux was there from uh, you know, probably uh, early seventies or early nineties, early eighties, I, I think. So Linux is an open source, um, open system, right? So you can see the source code of Linux, but Microsoft we couldn't see that. So that's like you can think of it as a closed source. So what? So when this was happening, people started thinking that how do I dis make sure that uh, I uh, onboard more developers or how do I make it open to a lot of developers uh, where people can just print the copy of the source code and then they can uh, check in the code and they can uh, modify it. So that is uh, one of the uh, moments and uh, there was uh, something called as SVN uh, uh, in the beginning. And it had its own limitations, and uh, yeah, we can you can read about this. And then uh, there was uh, you might have heard about Linux store words. Linux store words. This guy. So this guy is the one who, uh, uh, who who is like um, a father figure for uh, this, you know, uh, Linux. So he took Unix and he modified uh, Linux and made his own operating system. He's he's still there. He's from Finland, and uh, he because of him we are able to use um, you know a lot of uh, containers Linux based operating system you know, for free, and then people have modified such things. For example, Mac OS also OS is also built on uh, Unix, so it is like Unix like uh, thing. So this guy. Uh, started thinking that okay, how do I uh, make so uh, the kernel code, the Linux kernel code is available uh, freely, right? You can go to GitHub and you can search. So he thought that how do I, uh, uh, you know, uh, write something. So he he was basically pissed off with SVN uh, that okay, it doesn't have features that I need. So he created uh, something called as Git. So uh, his idea was. Um, like, okay, you have source code, uh, like version zero, somebody has created the repository, initial repository. And when somebody uh, uh, checks it out, uh, so this uh, version control system doesn't know that somebody has checked out. So it's like just download. And a lot of people can download from here. And if you, uh, when you check out or download, so this, process of downloading is called cloning. So when you clone the software, it doesn't, the uh, repository which has hosted, it doesn't know it is, uh, people are cloning it. So now you have your own copy of the code. And then what you can also do is, uh, you can also check in your code. And uh, there is a difference between checking in and committing. So how uh, generally version control systems work is, you have one single line of uh, um, main branch. It is called as main branch. And the latest code uh, say this is our beginning. So version zero. And at some point, so you have a lot of versions and the latest version say, let us call it as like B12. Okay. At this, so there are no num numbers, but you know, just for our understanding. So at B12, uh, I want to, um, you know, uh, create a feature. For example, in our news, uh, so I want to collect, now I'm collecting from specific APIs and uh, scraping with one uh, uh, you know, uh, news agency. I can also create a feature where I can uh, scrape the data from say Hindustan Times or the Hindu or something like that. So that's a new feature. So how do I, how do you implement? You take the latest code and you can also create a branch from here. So if you create a branch, what happens is your code becomes local to you and un until you merge your branch back to the main branch, the code is still available. So when you create a branch, uh, so there are two types of branches. You can also create uh, at the main, uh, from the main branch, or you can cre also create locally. So it's called as a local branch and also remote branch. So remote branches, this particular version control system is aware that there is a branch and you can merge it. So the reason that you create uh, branches is when you create features, in, in fact, you can uh, do everything in main, 
but there are problems in uh, creating uh, no, uh, software. So I'll just explain what are the, the relationship between the branches and the uh, features. So imagine you have a uh, main branch. So there are a lot of nodes. Somebody has checked out, uh, sorry, uh, branched out here. And he has his own uh, no, um, versions. And this main is growing. So why do we have branches and how this matters to the like overall picture, like customer and all these things, right? So let us call this as a main branch. So this is also called as master branch. So until recently it was called as master. Now it's called as main branch uh, because you know master is uh, you know one of the words which is not uh, politically correct uh, because uh, for example if there is master there should be also slave right. So it sort of. Um, um, you know, uh, makes people to uh, remember the slave trade. So that is one of the uh, reasons. No, 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 we don't use the word called as master. It's called as main branch. So when you see these two term terminologies, think that it's a, it's the it's the main branch. Okay. So there are several terms like this where software guys have you know, stopped using it. So now you have main branch and you have uh, this. A particular branch which is which which let us call it as a feature branch this is the main branch and here you have some version right so what happens at the deployment level is so deployment guys or if you had to deploy uh, you you are not going to take this feature branch because the code is not still baked completely it is not uh, you know it doesn't satisfy uh, uh, you know uh, the customer requirements yet because people are working there, working there so you can take this latest branch sorry latest version and make a software of it and release it to outside world so this is how you create you know uh, software releases software releases are done on the main branch so you can still have other uh, branches which are like probably old uh, branches but uh, there is um, uh, you know how do you control that so uh, what happens when you merge it so when you merge it you should uh, you should take you should take care of you make sure that this code is also part of this branch so when you merge it it's always from the head of the feature branches and to the head of the master branches or the main branches uh, here and then you create the version so this is called as merging so this, this is at the concept level so uh, when you uh, the so the commands are the processes so you sort of create a uh, so the first thing that you create is called creation of repository which is called as init in git terminologies so you can init uh, a repository and you can actually host it uh, so and then people can check out the uh, code and then you can uh, the point where you download the code right so that is called as cloning people are uh, you can clone the code and then there are two terminologies which are a little bit confusing one is called as uh, uh, check in and check out that is coming from svn so now you can learn it as committing the code so there are two uh, uh, things uh, if you have used SVN before, it is a little bit confusing. So uh, check in and check out is uh, check in is to you know put the code back into the repository. But here we have something called as commit, uh, and there is also something called as push. So what happens when you commit the code is it 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 will be on your own laptop or your own um, copy. So it, it is just that you are just committing the code on your own laptop on creating these you know, nodes or these commit versions. So each of these commits have its own versions. We, we can see the versions later, I'll show you. So once you push on your feature branch, so you, you are working here and then you commit the code, it's still local. Once you push the code, it becomes part of your branch and people, other people who are working, right? Now remember that there are like, um, uh, hundreds of people working on this code and when you only when you push it in uh, it gets published to the uh, feature branch not to the main branch so when you open your um, git repository and sort of look at the information look at list of branches and so on so you will be able to see 
the latest changes only after you push. So, uh, you know, uh, if there is push, there should be, uh, you know, there, there, there is a opposite uh, action as well, which is called pull. <laughs> this pull is nothing but, so you had downloaded it at some point today, uh, probably, and uh, there is a lot of code changes over this week. And if you had to you know, uh, update your code, you need to pull the branch, like pull the uh, all the code. So when you do the pull, people who have uh, created all the uh, branches and updated their code, it gets your, uh, all this code gets into your local repository. So that is what is called as pulling your data. So there are several commands to do that, but you don't have to remember the commands because now we have UI and uh, this uh, VS code uh, has its own extensions to you know, uh, do all these things. Uh, or else uh, generally what we do is I'm used to uh, doing uh, on the command line. We uh, you know, just uh, check in, check out, look at status and all these things um, on the command line. But, but you don't, nowadays you don't have to remember uh, any of this command because we already have uh, things to uh, things in place which uh, which can do it without command line okay so these are the terminals that you need to uh, you know uh, remember and uh, now let us establish what is github a relationship between uh, github and this git so in fact there is no at uh, uh, git is completely different so git is a uh, is a software where you can uh, download that package, just like we downloaded Python, and you can create your own repository and start working on uh, and things like that. You remember we talked about open source, right? So open source uh, had a lot of different uh, repositories uh, earlier. Uh, so um, GitHub is, uh, is one of the companies which, uh, which said that, okay, I will host all of your open source. Uh, if you want your um, open source to be uh, in GitHub, you can come and host it here for free. Okay. So this is uh, a company. GitHub is a company. You remember now the Microsoft has, uh, you know, um, bought this company for billions of dollars. So it was uh, initially, uh, you know, uh, with that uh, spirit. Of course, today also it's uh, it's free to use. Only thing is Microsoft can you know, utilize that. Uh, all the code in the uh, GitHub, which which is like most of the open source code, and it can uh, do something on top of it and, and generate. For example, our um, um, what is it called? Um, open AI, right? So Open AI, uh, there is also one more, Git Pilot, uh, so uh, Copilot, yeah, Git Copilot. So this Git Pilot, Copilot was um, trained on the data of GitHub. Now we have another product called Git uh, Git Copilot. So you can you can install the Git Pilot, uh, you know Git uh, Copilot here on your um, uh, IDE, and you can simply write comments and it generates the code. So just like we did on uh, ChatGPT, so it does the same thing, and it can also detect uh, uh, some uh, common problems and so on. What it cannot do is it cannot understand the requirements at a bigger level. So of course it gets trained and it gets matured, but now uh, we should be able to, you know, uh, humans are better in, you know, uh, you know, coming up with the requirements and then there is, there is a necessity. So this necessity is something which uh, gets generated at human level, right? So once the necessity is generated, then you have some sort of a robot to do the job. So that is how you, if you should look at chat GPT and Copilot and so on. So, okay, coming back to GitHub. So GitHub was a company which you hosted all the open source uh, projects. And uh, yeah, uh, so Linux store worlds, uh, you know, gifted this world two things. One is Linux and second is Git. So uh, yeah, so, uh, which changed the world drastically. So no other company or no other person has changed, uh, you know, in at uh, code level, at computer science, in computer science uh, context, no other guy has, you know, fueled the uh, industry so much, okay. 
So remember his name. So GitHub, uh, okay, and you had open source. Uh, okay, now let us look at how the code repository looks like, how GitHub looks like, and let us look at what we learned so, so far. So let me just show you Git repositories. This my So you are comp so in your uh, company you won't have you be using uh, GitHub probably you'll have, you'll use uh, some enterprise services like Bitbucket uh, and so on. So now in fact GitHub uh, has its own uh, you know enterprise version. So people are migrating to that for cost optimization. Bitbucket is from Atlassian, the same company which does uh, Jira. Okay. So okay, so let us look at uh, the GitHub how it looks like. So this is the logo of that uh, GitHub. So this is my repos uh, repositories. You can just like you know Gmail and so on. You can create your own account. So once you get create the account, you'll have these sort of things. You can create your own repository. For example, let us just focus on this. This is my repository. I have created a repository, and this is hosted now. So if I were, um, you know, somebody who wants to contribute to this particular, this the basic source code, I have put it here, like news.py, script.py, so on, so on. Okay. And there are also some conventions. There is a readme file and .md file, and there is project requirements.md file. So you can look at this. So if I want, uh, so generally when you want to contribute to the project, right? Generally you come here to readme.file uh, and then you look at uh, how this code is organized and what is the intent and et cetera. And then go to, you know, uh, this is, our, you know, I, I created for, for my own purpose, but generally uh, there will be some, some more MD files where you can, you know, look at what this does. So let us take a look at something else. Um, dashboard. Let us take a look at uh, say some repository. Okay, uh, I don't know this, but generally there will be readme dot uh, md file, which is which talks about the project. So that by default it will be like this, like uh, it will be on the same page, like landing page. So this is readme dot uh, md file. And then there will be license related uh, file. So what sort of license? Yeah, this is a different topic, but yeah. And then you can see that dot md is uh, is a markup file. So yeah, uh, whenever you see md, it's like uh, it's it's a documentation. And uh, there is also something called as git ignore. Uh, yeah, yeah. So when you check in the code, it ignores all this. For example, we generate a lot of uh, temporary files like um, PyCache uh, and so on. So uh, log files and so on, right? So you don't technically have to check uh, check in uh, that. So you sort of exclude those. So this is an exclusion file. And this is how they have um, organized it. But yeah, this is how generally the source code looks like, uh, similar to what we have done here. So there is this and this. So let us look at what committing or what, what is checking out means. So uh, cloning is first, now you look at the uh, repository. How do I take this and make, uh, con start contributing this, con uh, contributing to this particular thing. So first thing is you should have access to this. You can, now I have made it uh, public already. So anybody can uh, check out. So I can uh, either, you know, uh, download this um, or anything like that. In fact, I can uh, go here. Uh, where is it? Uh, this is okay here, and you can you can see that uh, there is something called as uh, um, local here. So you can actually there is uh, you can actually start contributing directly. You can write the code here, so which is using code spaces. But generally, we uh, this is a new feature, so so. Uh, latest one so you can actually download this so this is how you download this is the repository url which is nothing but the same thing here so you can copy this you can also you know uh, download a client um, 
which is called as GitHub desktop, and then you download it. You can also download using zip file, but it 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 will it will just download as an you know uh, just the uh, source code. Okay, I'll show you what checking out means. Okay, let us open a terminal and let us try to understand what it means. Okay. This is a terminal. Let me increase the font. So let me put in this directory. I'll create, uh, say, make dr uh, demo or something like that. This is my directory, like base directory. I can, you simply type git and you can see that you get this a lot of documentation, which means that your command is working. So you use this git clone and uh, paste whatever you have downloaded. So you can see that it downloaded the code. So it says cloning this and remote, I'm not working something. Yeah, this means you have downloaded the code. Now, either uh for example okay this is your uh this is the place where it downloaded okay so there is some commands you can learn about this uh, you know, uh commands and you can use the commands as well but you don't have to do this now let us go back to uh, or let me put um, set the code version to work the shortcut i have I won't finish live, but let us look at here. Okay, you can uh, open open uh, folder. You can go to that book, navigate to that particular thing uh, here. Project demo. I can take this and open. Uh, save all. So I have opened a new instance of VS Code, which is like, let us think of it as like fresh code. So yeah, so VS Code, so when you downloaded the uh, code, which is using clone, there is there are also a lot of hidden things that happen. So if you just download the zip, these hidden things won't happen. So let me show you what happened. Back to here. So you can see that readme news and this folder, let us look at lsa so this command lsa shows the hidden folders or in the um in the, in the in the current directory so a is for all so if you have any file or directory which is starting from dot it is it is called as hidden file in linux or um, unix so uh okay so you can look at these two directories these two directories have metadata of your uh, code so let us make a change and let us see how it looks like. Okay, I have downloaded it. And this particular, um, you know, um, icon in VS Code, it talks about source code control. Okay, so it also has some uh, uh, sort of a uh, tutorial when you open it for first time. So let, let us try to uh say make some changes here okay and let's see how it looks like in uh return news so get a i'll just add a comment here um save news from api so i have made changes so on your so you can see this green uh this one so this tells that this code is getting modified and this is the latest change if you click on that you can see that git local working changes and this is the change that that has recently happened okay so you can okay now that code is uh, changed so if you go back to here you can, you can also already see that there is like one pending changes it automatically detected but uh, generally before this ui or without this ui you can also how do i see that there are changes right so <clears throat> um so um this is these are your files you can see this is the command it says that this file got modified news.py okay so what are the changes you can also use 
quit diff and then see the changes so so far uh, you know until last few years we are doing this so developers like used to see this particular uh, you know, um, mm -hmm. sort of output when you looked at diff so this place tells us that okay this is something which got in and uh, what are the line numbers and so on okay and it also outputs the before couple of lines and after couple of lines so that we know the context okay this is how we used to look at diff and you know uh, do there are code review tools and then we used to make diff but all these things are embedded here inside our uh, id so use id so you don't have to like remember so now you know that these are the changes which is nothing but on the command line we, we did uh, uh, git for this one so when you click on this if you just you know uh, uh, look at this you, you can see that what are the uh, uh, what are the changes so this got added and what does commit mean right uh, for every commit uh, it's you need to put some message the reason that you put message is to tell other developers or for yourself it's like a doc code level documentation why this change was uh, done okay i'll just put say comment uh, for future work this is just a this is just a message and then i can click on commit uh configure this is uh, okay um you can also configure your email IDs and so on um, let me just let me just comment uh without it Okay. There is some basic configuration it is asking me to do. You can also add. Uh, so let me show you what. How does the comment um, looks like, and then. Username. I did. What have I used here? Okay, let me put some ID. It doesn't matter. It's fine. So these are like initial configuration. So it because it uh, when you check in the code, uh, it you should it should, it should know that who is doing the changes, right? So the, this, these are I think mandatory ones to configure. Did another gmail dot com. So now let me try to do checking. Okay. Now it got checked in. So whatever I'm doing on uh, doing here, I can do the same thing on command line as well. Okay. So now we have just committed, which is a local commit. So what does a commit mean? Uh, I'll show you here on command line so that git log. So when I issued this git log command, you can see that there is commit and there is some sort of string. These are these are called as uh, unique strings or U, U, U IDs, unique IDs. So these are like unique. So these are the ones which instead of V1, V2, V, U, so on. So these are the strings which are unique and this is the version. So you can look at this. This is the first version head at uh, you remember we drew, drew a picture saying that this is the top of the head. So that is what is this. So when I committed, I generated this ID and said that this is the, uh, this is my like author details. And uh, these things are coming from, these commits are the old commits which are coming from when I created the uh, repository. So if you will go here, and you can also look at uh, like issues, pull requests, and oh, where is uh, 
हिस्ट्री करेंसी स्पेंड ओके यस सर है कमेंट्स थ्री कमेंट्स सो दिस इज दिस आर नथिंग बट दिस आर लाइक शॉर्ट कमेंट डिटेल्स व्हिच इज नथिंग बट सेम थिंग सो इन ईच ऑफ दिस कमिट व्हाट हैपेंड सो दिस इज व्हाट इज लाइक वर्शन कंट्रोल सो यू शुड बी एबल टू ट्रैक द कोड लाइक व्हाट वाज द चेंज डन एंड व्हेन वाज द चेंज डन एंड सो ऑन यू कैन सी दैट दिस गिट लॉग इज द कमांड वे ऑफ डूइंग इट कमांड लाइन वे ऑफ डूइंग इट इनफैक्ट द दिस गाइस हैव Uh, you know, uh, do the same thing in the backend, but they showcase in such a way that it is useful or easy to use. So now you don't have to be a Git expert to use Git, right? So now you understood the the how Git works, and you can easily, uh, you know, check in, check out the code, make changes. So once I uh, made the changes, let us uh, I'll uh, demonstrate one last thing, which is called as pushing. So there is this button which is looks like uh, for refreshing. So you can either go here or you can just put push here. New action will pull and push. So it will sync up the code and it is trying to push the code. So we got some uh, probably error. So uh, let's see what is the error. So generally, what happens is uh, push. let's see okay it asks for a uh, username so this username is ask he is asking this is coming from github because i have created the repository so it is uh, it is a third party uh, so far so this is my username and the can dr let me see if it works and uh, okay so generally uh, this particular password uh you won't have password generally so uh, when you check out the code it's github now has stopped uh, accepting the password you need to generate the you know um, authentication id which you can you know generate it i forgot where it is but yeah so once you use that and then uh, close it in it becomes part of your um, you know uh, main branch because i have checked out from the main branch and i'm working on the main branch you can look at this part i'm working on the main branch so you can also create a new branch so you can so if you create all here it becomes your local branch and then it gets um, you know uh, you can create a new branch like it's a local and then you can push it you can also create um, you know branches here as well like this is your main branch you can also go and create new branch this is a remote branch so if somebody is creating new branch uh, you just pull your code you now pull the code which is like downloading all the changes and it becomes part of your repository so this is how the version you know uh, control is happening using github so just get familiar with that so download the code uh, yourself uh, from my repository which i sent yesterday and create the account while uh, creating the account it allows also ask for you know uh, create an uh, api token or something like that so create that token it's just all ui based you don't have to remember the command commands but yeah it's nice to be aware of this uh, processes and this um, uh, commands okay so that's all i had for today um, so the, just uh, uh, since we are creating the project you, you need to be aware of this so how to work uh, in a uh, in a distributed format this is nothing to do with python but it's a, it, it is a most one of the most important things because you are not going to simply write python code you are also you going to use source code control systems and deployment and so on so this is one of the like you know um, key things that you need to be aware version control uh if you are working in in teams obviously we'll work in teams in future you, you'll never be you know uh, working having your own uh, repository and working unless you're on you have your own project right like just for um you are like one man army for that entire project so that's not going to happen um so yeah learn about this and then get familiar and uh, yeah tomorrow we will continue with the uh, source code of the, uh, you know of our project and keep checking in here and i suggest that you guys create a branch with your own name or whatever you want and pull the code make it part of your vs code so you don't have to remember the comments it will be part of your uh, uh, repository 
get used to this. So once you uh, get used to this, we, I will also do some sort of code review. So uh, I was telling you that main branch from where you create a release and release it to uh, the outside world, right? So all the updates that you get, software updates, are coming from those main branches. So there will be other branches which are like still ongoing um, uh, features which are not checked in. So once you merge it, that becomes part of main branch and in the upcoming release, it will become part of your new version of that particular um, you know, uh, software. So that is the relationship between the, your software development and software release and um, deployment and so on. And then your source code. Source code helps us to keep track. You can also go back to source code, say what happened last year, two, three years back, 10 years back, what happened to this particular code and what was the intention of that particular developer and what was the change and so on. So because this is never going to, uh, there won't be any uh, duplicate commit IDs and so on. So that that is something which Git ensures that there won't be any duplicates here. Okay. So yeah, that's it. Yeah, thanks for staying. We, yeah, uh, we are at eight six. So any questions at this point of time? Uh, again, feel free to ask. We also learned a little bit of, of history because that is important to understand how we landed here. So if you do not have that uh, history, uh, um, brief of history, what happened, so you won't be able to appreciate why we are here. Uh, and also you will start reinventing wheels like, you can say that, oh, why do I have this commit um, step? I can directly push it, right? So you can, so such things you can, uh, such questions can be answered only if you know the history of the uh, things. Okay. Yeah, yeah, that's it for today. Uh, today, tomorrow will, you know, uh, uh, this this week is the last, uh, last week. So please be, um, you know, uh, free to ask, uh, any questions and do not hesitate to uh, ask any sort of uh, support that you require. So please make, make use of it and uh, try to do the, this exercise, whatever we did today. Okay.